Taxi. Oh, hey, that was my cab. Oh, hi, boys and girls. It's me, Mrs. Salmon. I'm in New York City. It's very noisy here, but it's one of my favorite cities in the world. I actually used to live and work here before I moved to Europe. New York City is the home of the Empire State Building. Can you see it? It's that tall building behind me. It's also home of the Statue of Liberty, Central Park, the New York Yankees. Oh, and don't forget, Famous Ray's Pizza. I tell you what, some of the best pizza I've ever eaten. You should see the size of a slice of pizza. It's so big it could feed a family. New York City is full of excitement and creativity. It's full of music and theater, and it's full of art. There are hundreds of museums and galleries in New York, housing some of the most famous art in the world. Museums like the Guggenheim, the Met, and the Museum of Modern Art. These are some of the best places to visit when you come to New York. If you ever get here, tell them Mrs. Salmon sent you. Today I want to talk about one of my favorite kinds of art, abstract art. Today I'm going to teach you how to create your own masterpiece. Are you ready to get started? Come on, let's go. Let's do art. Taxi! Do art. Do art. Doodly do. Do art. Do art. Doodly do. Just grab your paper and your pencil too. You can grab your scissors, markers, and your glue. You can do art. You can doodly do, do art, do art, doodly do, do art, do art, do what? Art! You're smart! Hi, what are we doing today? Ooh, today in Do Art with Mrs. Salmon, we're going to make an abstract painting. What's an abstract painting? It's a painting that isn't of something realistic. Abstract art is about how you feel, not about what you see. That's what makes abstract art different from realism. Realism is art of people and places and objects. You know, real things. Oh, I understand. So if I'm happy and I want to paint an abstract painting, instead of painting a sunshine or a rainbow, I'd paint some happy colors, like blue or yellow, or some happy shapes, like circles. That's exactly right! When you paint abstract art, you use colors and shapes to express your emotions. Most of the time, you can't even tell what an abstract painting is. Golly, I wish we could go see some paintings, but because of the coronavirus lockdown, we can't go out. What are we going to do? You can still see art. Mrs. Salmon's got some art in her house. I know she's got some paintings. Should we go take a peek? Do you think she'll mind? No, Mrs. Salmon won't mind. She's super cool. Cool, let's go. Let's go. Okay, here we found one in Mrs. Salmon's house. Oh yeah, let's take a look. Do you think it's abstract or realism? Hmm, well... I see it's a flower. Yeah, it's a piace lily. That's peace lily, silly. Anyway, it's a flower. That's an object. Realism paintings are of objects you can recognize. So, this painting must be realism. Yeah, definitely not abstract. Well done. Let's go find another one. Okay. Oh, hey, here's another one. Let's have a look. Mmm, object I recognize. It's a house. That would make this a realism painting, not abstract. What do you think? I don't see a house. What do you mean you don't see a house? It's clearly a house. It's got a roof and it's got a door and there's people standing there. Oh, hey, wait a minute. You've got your eyes closed. Oh, ha, I did, sorry. Oh, yep, it's a house. Definitely realism, not abstract. Yes, I agree. Let's go find more. Oh, here's one more. Yeah, ooh, I see a lady. Yeah, me too. And she's holding her cub. That's so cute. That's not a cub, silly. That's a baby. Ladies don't have 
have cubs, they have babies. Oh, you're super smart. Yeah, I could teach you a few things. Anyways, this is not abstract, it's realism. Yeah, I agree. Well, we found some realism paintings and now we found an abstract one. Yeah, this is definitely abstract. I don't see an object, but I see lines and shapes and color. This is abstract. Yeah, I agree. Oh, did you know this painting is by Mrs. Salmon's mom? Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, her name is Kathleen Hendricks. Remember, she's an art teacher in America. She's the reason why Mrs. Salmon loves art so much. Oh yeah, she made up our song too. Do art, do art, doodly do. Ha, don't get me started, I love that song. Ooh, this is a wonderful example of abstract art. Let's go find more, okay. We found another abstract painting. Yeah, and this painting's by Mrs. Salmon's dad. His name was Terry Kroom, and he was an abstract painter in New York and part of the abstract expressionism movement. What's that, a dance? No, silly, it was an art movement in America that started in New York City after World War II. An art movement is when a group of artists follow a certain style of art over a period of time. In this case, it was abstract expressionism. It made American painters like Jackson Pollock and Mark Rothko super famous. Hey, that was really interesting. <laughs> Thanks. Let's go find more. Okay. Here's another one. Yeah, and I know this one is abstract. I can see the colors and the shapes and the lines. Yeah, I see that too. Oh, and this painting is by Mrs. Salmon's uncle. His name is Jerry Clapshaddle, and he's an artist in America too. Wow, Mrs. Salmon has a lot of artists in her family. Yeah, I know. I can't wait to tell her that we saw all their paintings. Let's go. Thanks, you two. I know my house isn't a museum or a gallery by any means, but I'm glad that I had some art to share with you. I'm very lucky to come from a family of artists and I'm so proud of their work. I'm really happy I had a chance to share some of it with you. So you saw some realism and some abstract paintings in my house. Do you have any in yours? Why don't you pause the video and go look around your house and see if you can find any abstract art. I'll see you back here in a few minutes. Okay, so what did you find? Did you find any abstract paintings? If you did, did you notice their color and the shapes and the lines in these paintings? If you didn't find any abstract paintings, that's okay. Your parents are in luck because today we're gonna to create some of our own. I've really been looking forward to talking to you about abstract art. Ever since I was a kid, whenever I see art, it's always abstract paintings that I like the most. The fun thing about abstract art is that we can all see it differently. Abstract art is about color and shapes and lines, not about an object. It's about the way those colors, shapes, and lines make us feel. Take a look at this painting. This is an example of abstract art. It's also an example of one of my favorite American painters, Mark Rothko. Mark Rothko was a famous abstract painter from New York. His paintings were full of color and that color brought emotion. When looking at a Mark Rothko painting, without him even painting something we can recognize, we can feel what he was trying to express. Look at these Rothko paintings. Look at his use of color. I won't ask you what you see, but rather what you feel. Now imagine these paintings as tall as your living room. The emotion that Rothko was able to express in his paintings through color was incredible. Now Mark Rothko was not just an amazing artist, he was also an art teacher. He taught children art for over 20 years. I love Mark Rothko, not just because his paintings were beautiful and magical, but also because he believed that children were natural artists. I believe this too. There is an artist in you. 
Today we're going to make our own abstract paintings using shapes and colors like Mark Rothko did. We're going to make wet watercolors. You see on the board behind me some that my boys did. I think they turned out great. Let's talk about what materials you need for today's lesson. Today you'll need a waterproof cover for your table or work surface, an art apron if you think you're going to get messy, three water-based paints of different colors. Choose your favorite colors. You don't need a lot of paint, just a little bit. And please don't choose black or brown. Two small cups of water, one for cleaning your brush and one for wetting your brush, a medium paintbrush, heavy white paper, not typing paper, but something heavier, scissors, a pencil, and paper towels. I just wanted to tell you quickly about the paintbrush I'm asking you to use. I'd like you to find a medium-sized paintbrush, not a small pointed one, but a medium-sized one. This is so you can make nice long strokes across your paper. Okay, we're ready to start our abstract paintings. Now I've laid down a protective cover on my table. I've got a big white plastic one here. I've got my white sheet of paper, my pencil, and my scissors. Now we're going to make two little paintings out of this one white sheet of paper. So the first thing we're going to do is cut it in half. Now make sure your paper is laid down horizontally or landscape. Let's fold our paper in half, make a nice crease, open it up, and then cut along the crease to make two halves. This will be the only time we're using our scissors in this lesson, so make sure you're super safe and ask mommy and daddy if you need help. Okay, you can now put your scissors away. Now we've got our two pieces of paper and we're ready to draw some rectangles on them. Now on each of these pieces of paper, we're going to draw two rectangles. Now I'll show you how to do it. Take your pencil and don't bear down too hard. Make a light line and from a little bit off of the border, we're going to start our rectangle. So our rectangle is not going to touch the edge of the page. It's going to have a little bit of a border and along the side is the same. And then we're going to stop our rectangle there and go across and then go up again. Remember, leave a border. Do you see how I did that? You can follow along. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing under it, but this time our rectangle is going to be a little bit bigger because we have all this space. So start again. Don't touch the one above it. Make a little bit of a border there and along the sides the same and at the bottom the same and then back up. There's our two rectangles. All right, we're going to do the same thing on the next page. And these rectangles are just going to be our guides for where we're doing our painting. So don't bear down too hard. All the way down, leave a border. I'm going to make a bigger one this time. And then over and then up and see I'm leaving a border. I'm not touching the edge and I'm going to do the same thing but make a smaller one underneath. I'm not going to touch the one on top. I'm not going to touch the edges or the bottom or the other side. There we go. We have made one, two, three, four rectangles and they don't have to be perfect. They're just a guide for where our paint is going to go and we are ready for the next step. Okay, I've got the next materials that we need to get going on our watercolor painting. I have chosen three different colors of paint as I said before. I have blue, green, and yellow because I love the color combination there, but you can choose any colors you want as long as they're not black or brown because those colors don't bleed or blend very well with the water. I've got my water here in the middle. Definitely going to need that. I've got my medium sized paintbrush and I chose medium because we're going to be doing big strokes. Okay, so you don't want a tiny paintbrush. You want a medium sized paintbrush. And I also have my paper towels that I'm going to put underneath my paper to help absorb water. Okay, so we're only going to work with one piece of paper at a time so you can put your second piece of paper to the side. Now make sure you have your paper towel underneath your piece of paper. Take your paintbrush and let's dip it into the water. We're going to wet our piece of paper. 
So nice big strokes of water all the way down your piece of paper. Now when you work with wet watercolors, your paintbrush has to be wet and your paper has to be wet. Okay, when your paper is completely wet, you're ready. Now I have three colors here, but for this first painting, I'm only gonna choose two of those colors. So the first color I'm gonna choose is blue. But you, whatever colors you have is great. So just choose one of your two colors and we're gonna start at the top of our rectangle and we're gonna paint the first rectangle with your first color. Now I'm gonna make nice big long strokes from side to side. Watch my strokes, nice big long strokes the whole time. I'm gonna put a little bit more water on my paintbrush from side to side. Now we're using that rectangle as a guide. We don't have to stay in the lines perfectly but we want to use it as a guide so we always have a white border. Now go all the way down your rectangle, a little bit more paint, a little bit more water. Isn't it lovely how the water makes the paint run on the paper? Now I'd like you to go past that bottom rectangle line and I'd like you to go actually into the second rectangle. Now I'm doing that because I want you to see what happens when we take the second color and paint the second rectangle. Okay, my first rectangle is finished. Okay, now we're gonna clean off our brush, make sure that none of that paint from the first color is on our brush. Rinse it out with the water, dab it on our piece of paper towel next to us, and we're gonna choose our second color. Now I'm gonna choose out of my three, yellow. I'm going to dip it into the yellow. My paper should still be wet and I'm actually going to start at the top of my rectangle. So I'm going to go on top of the blue that I've already painted. Now look what happens when I do that. I'm blending my two colors. What happened on your paper? Did a different color appear? Look at that. You did that. Well done. Now take that color and move all the way down to the bottom of your rectangle. A little bit more water, a little bit more paint, and go all the way down. We finished our first painting. We've taken two colors and we've actually made three. Do you see how the colors blended together? How the water made the color run onto the paper? I think it looks wonderful. And looking at this painting, the colors that I chose, the way they've soaked into the paper, the way they've blended, well, this painting makes me feel happy. You remember that abstract art is not just about what you see, but how it makes you feel. How does your painting make you feel? Okay, we're ready for our second painting. Remember, your painting's going to look different from mine. Every time you do a painting, it will look different. I can't wait to see what yours will look like. This time we're going to use all three colors and we're going to stay inside the lines and inside our rectangle. So once again, wet your paintbrush and let's wet our paper. Let's put the water all the way down your piece of paper to make sure it's nice and wet because our watercolor painting has to have wet paper. Okay, when it's nice and wet, you're ready to get started. So I'm going to choose for my first rectangle, yellow. And I'm dipping a little bit of paint on my paintbrush just like we did before. And I'm gonna stay in the lines this time as best I can. Nice long strokes from side to side. All the way down to the bottom of our rectangle. I'm gonna add a little bit of water and watch how it makes the paint run. Can you do that? Add a little bit of water and see what happens. Okay, so I finished my first rectangle. Now I'm gonna take some water and clean out my brush. Make sure all the yellow is off my brush. Dab it here on my paper towel. And I'm going to choose my second color. Now my second color is going to be green. I'm gonna take my paintbrush and dip it into my green, not too much paint and I'm gonna stay in the lines inside my rectangle. 
nice long strokes from side to side. You can see how the paint runs onto the paper when it's wet. I love the effect it gives. Okay, a little bit more paint. All the way down to the bottom of my rectangle. Nice long strokes from one side to the other. Okay, now don't worry about the middle. Our third color is going to get right through there. So let's clean off our brush. Dab it on your paper towel. And let's get our third color paint and paint the outside border around our rectangles. Don't forget, we're also going to paint inside between our two rectangles. So my third color is blue. So I'm gonna make sure my paintbrush is nice and wet and I'm gonna dip it into the blue. Now remember, not too much paint. And now I'm gonna paint around the borders. Now you've got a paper towel there, so it's okay if you go off of your paper. All the way around, everything that is white is now going to be blue. A little bit more blue paint around the border some more. You'll see how it's running together with the color that's already there. That's exactly what I want. Okay, now we're going to go in between the two rectangles. Look at that blue is mixing with the yellow and the blue is mixing with the green. Okay, there we go. All right, now you can see the colors blend together in the borders. If you don't see them blend, you can always dab your brush in the water and help them to blend even more. Let's give it a go. So if you need any more blending, you can do that as well. Look at that. I love that. How's it looking on your painting? Can you follow around the borders again with a little bit more water? See what happens. Okay, I think I'm finished now, are you? Let's stop and see what's happening with the paint. Move your brush away and let's just watch the magic happen. Here's our second painting finished. Do you see how different it looks that we've painted the borders? How the colors have blended, all three of them. I hope you like how yours has turned out. Well, we finished both of our paintings and they look beautiful together. Do you love what's happened with your colors? What's happened with your blending? Art happened. That's what we love about abstract art. It's about the surprises. You know what? You're an artist, and I am so proud of the masterpieces you've just created. Okay, that's the end of our third lesson. I hope you've had fun doing art with me today. I love doing art with you. Don't forget, if you ever make it to New York City, go and see some art and tell them Mrs. Salmon sent you. All right, Ryan, you ready to end it with our song? Yeah. Let's go. Do art, do art, do doodly do, do art, do art, do doodly do. do just grab your paper and your pencil too. You can get your marker, scissors, and your glue. You, you can, can do art. You can doodly do, do art, do art, doodly do, do art, do art, do what? Art. You're smart.